up your friend of the week of the Wolfpack Coaches Show presented by Lexus of Reno. We're live here at the Little Wall as we are every Wednesday night from 7 to 8 o'clock talking Wolfpack football with head coach Brian Polian. A lot to cover this week. Obviously a huge game, the battle for the Fremont Cannon coming up on Saturday at Mackey Stadium. Nevada tries to make it nine in a row over UNLV. We'll talk about that, talk about uh, last week's game against Boise State as well. Before we get to football, though, tonight, there is uh, something that we, we wanted to start the show by talking about, Coach, and uh, really a tough week here in the uh, in the community in Reno, and I know uh, you and, and your wife have reacted to this, but also the teams on Saturday are going to do something to try to uh, uplift the spirits, especially those that were affected at the, the tragedy at Sparks Middle School this week. Yeah, obviously that was an awful way for everybody in this community to start the week. Uh, I, I woke up um, Monday morning when, was uh, with my two children, actually with my wife, and, and while the news came on, and, and uh, obviously we are heart sick about it, and uh, when it hits, so it's never a good thing when, when, uh, when obviously there's a tragedy like that at any school, but to have it hit so close to home, and uh, I've been told that uh, the, the two young uh, men that were injured uh, are both uh, big Wolfpack fans. And um, we've made the decision to uh, both teams. Uh, Bobby Houck has graciously uh, uh, agreed to as well. We're going to wear a, a Sparks Middle School logo on our helmet to, to honor them and, and show some support. And I'm hopeful that, um, that uh, we can uh, – just uh, offer a small bit of help, if we could, uh, to that community. Also going to be an opportunity for fans who are at the game on Saturday to uh, make donations uh, to yep. support. So th that'll be great coming up on Saturday. And anything football can do, I guess, to help in, in a time. This is really where uh, sports can play a big role, I think. In oh, this is part of what we do. It, it's uh, Our role is to help bring the whole community together. And, and uh, if we can help uh, the Sparks uh, community heal a little bit, even just a little bit, then uh, we're all for it. All right, game on Saturday coming up at uh, 3 o'clock against UNLV, and uh, the patch will be on the helmet. That'll be great. And, again, there will be an opportunity uh, to donate for uh, fans that are there at the stadium, with uh, which should be a sellout crowd Saturday uh, against UNLV. Talk about that game a little bit more coming up in a few moments. Let's go back and talk about the game last week against Boise State. And, you know, Coach, your guys came out in 17-7 lead at the half. You really put together another strong first half of football in a tough environment. I was really pleased with uh, our effort in the first half. I was really pleased offensively with the opening drive, even though we had to settle for a field goal. Uh, I was really pleased with the way uh, we were able to convert a third down. Uh, that crowd was juiced up at the beginning. It was a very live place. I mean, uh, for us to take the opening kickoff, go down the field, get it to the nine, unfortunately, you know, we, we went backwards and ended up having to kick a field goal. Uh, but uh, I was very pleased with that. I thought, uh, you know, I don't know if it's fortunate or unfortunate. We knocked Southwick out of the game in, in on the first play, uh, create a turnover on defense. We did some really good things. We go up 10 nothing. They come down, answer 10-7. And to me, our drive right before the end of the half where we really ran the ball effectively um, and, and punched it in, and I thought that was a great answer by our offense. Uh, unfortunately, we came out uh, in the second half, allowed them uh, to come down and score a touchdown to, to make it 17-14, and we went three and out. And, and really had a very convertible third down, um, lost leverage on a block, couldn't get it, punted. And, uh, and I really think the turning point of the game is we punt, change field position, uh, and um, they, they run a simple power play. We have eight guys in the box, but we misfit it, put two guys in the D-gap, nobody in the C, and the ball splits us. The free safety's a little too low, so we're not down a – corral a really great back in Jay Ajayi and and it goes the distance and they're up three and I thought for me personally that was really the turning point of the ball game you know we've talked about this before this year where 10 guys can do the right thing one guy isn't in the right place or somebody's eyes aren't, aren't in the right place I mean, it, it's tough obviously for for fans to watch but for you guys as players and coaches how frustrating is it getting that this seems to be kind of a theme that is built with this football team? it's becoming increasingly frustrating to the point where uh, on Sunday morning when you're watching the tape, my hands are literally shaking yeah. as, as I'm watching it because these are self-inflicted wounds. If, if, if Jay Ajayi breaks six tackles and goes to the house, 
you're not happy about it, but at least you can look at it and say, listen, the guy's a great player. He made a great play. Sometimes they're better than you are. Um, but too often we have made critical errors uh, and they are self-inflicted wounds, and we've got to stop that. And uh, I can... I can only tell you that as players and coaches, we're doing everything we know how to do to try and get it fixed. And there's no sense in trying to explain it away. We just got to get it fixed and keep our heads down and just keep working. With the way it's happened to happen against Boise on Saturday, we saw the second half UCLA and Florida State. Do you think there's any sense of your team that when, all right, you guys come out, you, you know, they score, you punt the football, that sense of here we go again. Do you think that creeps in at all? Uh, I think it's got more to do with – um, when we go in at half and we've played well, like we did at UCLA, 17-13 at the half, or 17-7 at Florida State and really could have been 17-14, um, up 10 points at Boise, uh, in my heart of hearts, I wonder how many guys in the room just culturally think, boy, I hope this goes on for another 30 minutes, right. as opposed to staying in the moment and saying, you know what, just execute one play at a time instead of sitting there and thinking, wow, boy, I hope if we play this good for the next half, we'll win this game. Yeah. I, I, I really do wonder if that might be the core of our problem. And the only way to fix that is to just preach and preach and preach about, hey, next play, yeah. most important play, next play. And if that one doesn't go well, the next play after that's the most important play. Because uh, I, I really do, I mean, I have looked at everything. Should we come out and warm up as a team? You know, I mean, I've, I've tried to look, you know, should we stop giving them peanut butter sandwiches? And have, I, don't know, I don't know what it is. Uh, if I knew the answer, it would be fixed, trust me. So, you know, we're, we're working on it. I, that, that's the, I guess that's the best thing I can say is we're trying to get it fixed. Well, it, it seems in some ways like kind of the chicken and the egg argument of what comes first. Does the mentality change, or do you have one of those games where you come out and you play a great second half, and then that's what, what gets it fixed? I, I don't know. I, I, I do think there's some truth in that, but I also think our guys, uh, is there a mindset depending on the opponent? Yeah. You know, do they go to Boise and say, you know what, we're not supposed to be up 17-7 at the half? as opposed to a team that, in their mind, they think, hey, we're better than this team. You know, I, I don't know the answer to that. I, and, and, frankly, I haven't been around here long enough. You know, th these are things that you don't learn in six months. You, you learn over the course of time. One of the, uh, the things you talked about going into the game when you talked about what you needed to do coming out of the bye week, you said, hey, we, we got to get our running game going. And when you especially look at those final two drives you put together in the first half, that looked like the Nevada run game we've seen in past years. What were you guys able to do so successfully there to really start ripping off five, six, seven-yard runs? Well, I think uh, we blocked it better on the perimeter. I thought our tight ends uh, are improving. And they're young now. I mean, with Colby Arenzi out and – and Jeffers still coming back from an injury, you're looking at two freshmen out there. Jared Gibson, a redshirt freshman, and Patrick Clifford, a true freshman. Mm -hmm. So uh, clearly they'll get better with experience, and hopefully every week we'll get a little bit better. But there's no doubt in my mind that they played better and we were able to secure the perimeter better than we had against San Diego State. And, uh, and you know, we got behind Joel, and Joel's pretty good. And, and, and when you can... You know, when you can get a guy who's road grading and wearing somebody out and you can keep going, uh, you know, I, I think some of our most effective runs were to the left side because Joel was in a favorable matchup and he was wearing them out. You know, you talk about the tight end. We saw you guys run a lot of the, the two-back look where Jared Gibson, your tight end, was actually in the backfield. Tell us about that adjustment you made and, and why you guys did it, how that helped you guys. Well, you, you know, a lot of our principles stay the same but we can run them from different looks. And the thought process was, um, Jared's a little bit younger. He hasn't played as much. By backing him off a little bit and instead of playing from a wing position, putting him back in the backfield, it's really what, the difference of three steps, two mm -hmm. yards? Uh, but it enables him to see things a little bit better from back there. His job assignments don't change. You know, the things that we can do all stay the same. It's just a different pre-snap look, but it helps 
open his shutter, for lack of a better term, so he can see things a little bit better. You run the ball so well to end the first half. You take that 17-7 lead. You come out in the second half, and we can talk about, you know, the defense didn't do this, defense didn't do that. But the offense struggled as well in the second half. What was the difference, do you think, with the offense having that success going into the half and then not able to replicate it in the third and fourth quarter? I, I think it was really just execution, to be honest with you. We had some, you know, some convertible third downs. We don't convert. Uh, Richie had, had a corner route on the sideline that it would have been a tough catch, but we hold Richie to a pretty high standard. Mm -hmm. Ball went through his arms. We need to make that catch. You know, we, each side of the ball needs to pick the other side up. And, and if the defense is struggling, then we need to extend the drive and we need to change field position and, and go down and punch one in. And, and right now, you know, that's something we got to do better. All right, we'll see if the Wolfpack can get it done this week against UNLV. Always an exciting game, the battle for the Fremont Cannon. Should be a great one on Saturday, 3 o'clock for the kickoff. We'll be on the air with the Bud Light Tailgate Show beginning at 1.30. Stick around, more of the Wolfpack Coaches Show live from the Little Wall coming up right after this. Suppose your vehicle had more power, more technology.
In five, three, two, one. The Wolfpack Coaches Show is brought to you by Lexus of Reno, who invites you to test drive a luxurious Lexus automobile today. Or for more information, you can visit Lexus.com. Battle for the Fremont Cannon coming up on Saturday. It's Nevada UNLV, 3 o'clock at a sold-out Mackey Stadium. We'll be on the air with the uh, Bud Light Tailgate Show beginning at 1.30. What is this week like for you as you get set to go into your first Nevada UNLV game? A little bit crazy. <laughs> it really has been. But it's been fun. It's got the same feel that um, as a GA I got at Michigan, Michigan State. Mm -hmm. You know, just from the Sunday that you played the previous game, it felt different. Uh, same feeling we had at Notre Dame SC and – and and then at uh, Stanford Cal, so uh, I'm excited about it. It's been a it's been a neat week, and uh, yeah, everybody told me how important it was when I got here. But I'm getting a lot of reminders this week. <laughs> well, that leads right into you talking about all the different rivalry games you've been a part of. Sean here in the crowd asked of all the places you've coached, what is the most heated rivalry game you've been a part of? Oh, um, Notre Dame SC. Okay. Uh, Michigan Michigan State is pretty volatile. I mean, that's, uh, that's an in-state thing. There's an old saying in the state of Michigan, uh, blue or green, no in-between. But uh, the Notre Dame SC one uh, had such a national scope to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first one I was ever involved with was the 2005 Bush Push game. And, and uh, that's one of the greatest games in college football history. And to be a 30-year-old assistant coach on the sidelines for that one, and we came out wearing green jerseys and – I'll never forget the sound of the crowd when our team emerged from the tunnel and 80,000 fans realized that they were in green because yeah. they had warmed up in blue. And when they realized they were in green, the energy was just astounding. Have you ever been more hurt by a play than the fourth and whatever it was completion of Dwayne Jarrett down the sideline? I was sick to my stomach. Uh, you know, we're, we, we, we got him uh, – we had him and we sacked him and had him in third and twenty. We're, this is this is how sick football coaches are. We played cover two. They threw a check down to Reggie Bush who made a guy miss, got eleven. So now we got him on fourth and nine, and they threw the absolute perfect fade ball. Uh, and and I think and Dwayne Jarrett made the catch, and it's a great catch. Um, and after the game, my mom and dad were there, and, and, and uh, my dad was standing with my wife, and he hugged me, and he's like, hey. He's like, listen, <laughs> you were just a part of one of the greatest games in the history of the sport. It doesn't feel good now, but you'll realize someday how special that was. Yeah, and you said, Dad, give me a couple of weeks That's before right. we talk about That's what right. a great game this was. Marcus here in the crowd asks, how much focus is put on a rivalry game versus the other games you play during the season? No, I don't, you know. There's no more focus. I mean, I like to think that we expend a ton of energy no matter who we're playing. I, I think um, the energy level is different. The, um, the week is different. And actually, I've spent a lot of time this week talking to them about keeping their poise, mm -hmm. uh, about not getting wrapped up uh, in the emotion of the game. To borrow a phrase from... Jim Harbaugh, uh, we cannot allow ourselves to be emotionally hijacked by the fact that we are playing UNLV. We have to execute. No, ma it doesn't matter who can yell the loudest in pregame, or who, you know, that stuff doesn't matter. You got to go play ball, and emotion will carry you for a series or two. After that, you got to go execute. You used the word pressure when you were talking to the media earlier this week. How much pressure do you feel going into this game? Uh. You know, I don't. I don't sit and think about it from a from a. You know, somebody asked me. You know, in your first year, do you want to be the guy that loses the cannon after eight years? Yes, yes, I, I do. Yeah. It's like no, <laughs> I, I don't think about that. I mean, I really can't. All I can do is is prepare the team as best we can as a staff to play as good as we can play. And if we play lights out, if we play to the best of our ability, and we don't win the game. What can I do? Yeah. That's football. I just got to make sure that, that we got to – that we're prepared to play to the best of our ability. Now, I know how important it is. That's where I feel the pressure. I, I don't feel the pressure in the sense that 
you know, I have to do more than we normally do in a week. I feel the pressure in the sense that this community has been so wonderful to us. I know how much this means for the community. I always want to win. Our staff always wants to win. Our players always want to win. We want to celebrate this one with the community, especially given what we've gone through this week. One of the things that uh, was asked, uh, one of the things you've talked about this week is that this is a much better UNLV team than we've seen in the past. And one of the questions on Twitter simply was, what makes this UNLV team better than they've been before? Experience. These guys, especially on defense, well, across the board, they're playing with a lot of seniors that have been playing together for two and three years now. And I think Bobby has done a great job of, of changing the culture there. Uh, you know, they hadn't won a road game in an obnoxious amount of time. It had been a bunch of years. And they go down and win a really close game on the road at New Mexico. Mm-hmm. And, and you can't get over that hump unless the culture is changing. And, and I think they're playing with more confidence. Uh, I think the quarterback's making plays with his feet. And, uh, I, I, you know, they, they have some good players. And, and I expect this is going to be a close, competitive ball game. Here's another Twitter question for you. When's the last time you wore red? Uh, I Did don't, you have to eradicate it all from your wardrobe? I have kept all my St. Francis High School from Buffalo, New York, the Red Raiders. I've kept all my high school gear. The rest of it is gone. I did. I know Coach All used to have a rule that there was never red allowed in the building. Mm-hmm. And uh, I backed off that a little bit. Uh, but I did put a, a, an email out to the team Sunday night. No red in the building this <laughs> week. Uh, so uh, I, my wife made the mistake, actually, at one point of, of wearing red out to, a, I believe, a luncheon. And somebody jumped her, and deservedly so. There you go. So she heard about that. I noticed, by the way, we were talking heated rivalry games. You didn't bring up your college days. In the, the heated John Carroll, Baldwin Wallace, the, ba- the Battle of Cleveland. Big one. And, and High I, emotion. The Cuyahoga Bowl Trophy. I mean, come on. Uh, yeah, of course. You, look, I can't believe I didn't know that. Yeah, any rivalry at, in, in sports is fun. And, you know, you talk to the people at John Carroll and Baldwin Wallace, and it's pretty important. It's big for them. I, will, I do want to go on record as saying uh, my alma mater, John Carroll, took Coach Ron Hudson, the offensive line coach, his alma mater, Muskingum College. The, the Blue Streaks took him out behind the woodshed last week. 41-9, to nine, and Coach Hud had to buy dinner for the staff on Sunday night. <laughs> Polian won, Hudson. I was, I was given 20 points, and we still, we still won. <laughs> still got the job done. That's very good. Nevada and UNLV coming up on Saturday. Should be a lot of fun to watch. You know, you mentioned Caleb Herring, the quarterback. A couple of years ago, he was really struggling, but since they put him back in, he has really played well back there. You mentioned his ability to make plays with his feet. What is he doing in the passing game to have some success? I, it, it, that is, a, that is a great job by the UNLV offensive staff. They are really uh, tailoring the offense to his strengths. A lot of quick game, getting the ball out of his hand quickly, half-field reads, or at least it looks to me on film that they're not asking him to scan from one side of the field to the other. And uh, th- they've added some, some read zone for him so that, you know, if, if you jump down on the dive, he'll pull it and go. And, and he is... If he doesn't like what he sees in the passing game, he has the ability to pull it down and go, and you have to account for him as a runner, just like teams have to account for Cody. And it, it makes it hard on you. For example, you cannot play two-man coverage against them. You're going to play man on the outside with two deep safeties. You, you don't have them counted for in the run game. And if he tucks it and goes, now you got problems. All right, uniform question for you here for Evan in the crowd. He wants to know, why isn't the wolf emblem on the white helmet blue? The silver blends in way too much, and you can't even see it on television. That is a great question. It's probably something I can fix next year. <laughs> that's actually the second person that's brought that up. See, there you go. That's It's fair. That's a fair question. There you go. Another question from uh, Andrew here in the crowd. What do you think the team has learned this season, and, and how will it improve them in the second half of the season now? I think they've done a wonderful job of sticking together. We have been through some adversity, uh, especially with the, the serious injuries we've occurred, uh, the, the setbacks that we've suffered on the field. I think this team has done a great job of sticking together. I also think, frankly, that we're maturing as a football team in every facet, on the field, off the field, in the weight room, how we prepare, in the classroom. I think people forget sometimes we're still young, especially on defense. A lot of these guys haven't played significant. The front four has, 
But a lot of the guys in the back seven had not played significant roles up until this year. So um, while I'm not pleased all the time with the results, I do believe that we're growing and getting better. We just need to continue to do that. Speaking of the front four, one thing you said going into the Boise game off San Diego State is, hey, we have to do a better job of getting pressure up front. I really felt like your front four did that, did a good job of collapsing the pocket and getting some heat around the quarterback in that game. Yeah, I caught a little bit of grief for saying publicly that I didn't think we, we pressured the quarterback well enough at San Diego State. But, I mean, I've always told the players, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. When it's good, I'll tell you it's good. When it's not good enough, we'll say that too. And coming out of San Diego State, it was not good enough, especially given what we do. I thought at Boise, when we got them into third and long, I thought our guys up front really rushed the passer very well. We hit, we had two sacks, we hit, the, we hit them a bunch, and we forced a lot of check down throws in third and long where they dump it for three, and we came up and tackled it, and we forced them to punt. Now, the story for us on defense is, can we get the opponent into third and long? Can we shore up the run defense so that people aren't dashing us for, you know, four or five a clip and get them into third and six and seven and cut, cut our big guys up front loose? All right, here's a question from uh, the crowd asking about why not continue using plays, going to plays that gain yardage consistently? It seems like things get a little conservative as the game progresses. Oh, I don't think that's fair. I mean, uh, the, the other team pays their coaches too. I mean, you're going to uh, – Nobody's going to let, let you go down the field running outside zone to the left every play. Eventually, they're going to, you know, and that's, that's happened. I mean, at San Diego State, we ran power four times in a row. The first three, we gashed them. The fourth one, they said, you're not going to do this anymore. I mean, I, I think our play calling, especially in offense this year, ha has, been, has been pretty good. I think we've done a nice job of keeping people off balance. And I think while we haven't run it to the standards that we'd like to run it, we've run it effectively enough to keep people honest and be effective in the passing game. I don't think anybody could argue that, that uh, we've advanced in the passing game. I mean, we've, I think clearly as a football team, we've gotten better throwing the ball. You know, we just got to find the balance now. All right, as you look ahead to Saturday, I know every day you guys go out there and practice, every day you gather your team, you talk to them at the end of practice. If there's one message that you want to deliver to your team before they get out there on Saturday afternoon, what is it? Rivalry games are very unique. They're unique to college football. It's what makes our game fun. Enjoy it. I, I, I want them to enjoy playing in front of a raucous, sold-out place on a gorgeous fall Saturday afternoon. I mean, this is what you dream about when you dream about playing college football. Sold out place, a little chill in the air. It's fall now. It's going to be sunny and perfect. I mean, to me, this is why we do it. And, uh, and sometimes you get worried that guys are going to tighten up a little bit. We shouldn't. There's no reason to tighten up. In fact, we should go play loose and fast and enjoy every second of it. All right, should be fun on Saturday. Looking forward to a sold-out, a loud, and a respectful crowd, hopefully. Yeah, State. yeah, I encourage all of our fans. Let's, let's, ha let's be loud, let's have a blast, but let's respect our, our friends from the South as they come up here. Coach, going to be a lot of fun. We'll see you Saturday. Thank you. All right, Head Coach Brian Polian here. Kickoff coming up 3 o'clock Saturday afternoon at Mackey Stadium. We're live here at the Little Wall. Proud to be Reno's game day headquarters and home for Wolfpack fans since 1922. The Little Waldorf Saloon, where history is made and traditions are celebrated. Mike Bradison's been on both sides of this rivalry. He's going to join us coming up next. <laughs>
Three, two, one. All right, we continue with more of the Wolfpack Coaches Show. We're live here at the Little Wall here every Wednesday night, 7 to 8 o'clock, talking Wolfpack football. And this week, of course, a big week. Nevada UNLV on Saturday in the battle for the Fremont Cannon. 3 o'clock kickoff at uh, Mackey Stadium. We'll have all the coverage beginning with the Bud Light Tailgate Show at uh, 1.30. Pleased to welcome Mike Bradis into the show. He is Nevada's safety coach uh, as well as recruiting coordinator. And I mentioned you, you've been on both sides of this, coaching at UNLV for a long time. You have a history here at Nevada as well. What, what's this week like for you, somebody who's, who's seen this thing from both sides? Oh, it's exciting. It's very exciting. The game is it's fun, and the build-up to it is fun, and the, seeing the fans and all the show during and after the game is fun. Well, during the game, it's the game, yeah. you know, that, that takes over. Do you think, I mean, again, having seen it from both sides, is it different here than it is for the folks in Las Vegas? Is it similar on both sides? Well, what's your experience been? Uh, it's, I mean, it's the, the series is tilted this way to mm-hmm. Nevada, and it has been for most of the way. And it's just, I think the buildup here is it's, it's been a little bit more important to the town in northern Nevada. And, it, I mean, the things that you go about and say, it's a good football town. Yeah. Coach Polian talked about the improved UNLV offense. What have you seen that, that's helped them have more success? And then what challenges you guys on Saturday? Uh, they're, they're more efficient than they've ever been. Mm-hmm. They, um, and they don't hurt themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they, they take what you give them, and they're a stay-on-track type of offense. We saw Caleb Herring a couple of years ago really struggle. He's been great since uh, since coming back in. What, what differences do you see in this kid? Oh, he's maturity. I mean, he's yeah. a senior. He's a fifth-year senior. He, he's bigger. He's stronger than he was. He's more decisive than he's ever been, what I've seen on film. And hey, he's won, took him to four wins in a row, and the most they've won in quite a, quite a few years. So, you know, they're they're riding high. You know, they played a, a really good top-20 team in, in Fresno. And I, I, you hear all the things, well, we didn't think we are going to win this and that. But yeah. they – Four in a row is good for anybody. Mike Bradison is our guest. He is the safeties coach, also recruiting coordinator here at the University of Nevada. Take, let's go back to last week for a second. First half, you guys really had a terrific defensive effort against that, that Boise State offense. And Coach Polian has talked about differences first half, second half. What do you see from, from maybe especially your guys in, in the back end? What are the differences between when they're having success and then when things don't go so well like in the second half? It's, just, it's a continued focus, mm-hmm. in, in my opinion. We just got to come out. and I, Coach has talked about it over and over and over, and it's football throughout the years is do your job and do it play in and play out yeah. and be consistent. The other thing that the coach has talked about is the youth, and, and you're working with a lot of young and fairly inexperienced guys back there. How are you seeing these guys progress as the uh, season they, is going? They, they, everything that – when you play, football is repetitive, and you see the more you play, the more you see, the more experience you get. So you've seen things happen to you before, and that's where what's occurring right now. Basically, our back seven, meaning the linebackers and DBs, are all brand-new players. Charles Garrett played – a little bit last year, and the rest are all brand new players this year. So <laughs> we're having a lot of new things that occur as we go. But you're looking for a consistency from them. Tell me about Brian Lane, another guy. Talk about moving around, you know, from safety to linebacker, and now back to to, to safety. I've seen him make some very good plays for you this year. But again, a, a guy that just hasn't played a lot of football. What's kind of the, the the ceiling for this guy? How good can he be as he gets those repetitions and continues to play in your system? Uh, he's 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 a big, tall kid. He's very athletic, and those things. He it's, it's we've done it out of need, but we've done it, and, you know, give him credit because he's been able to do two things. And those are two totally different things, yeah. you know, so give him credit for being a football player. And like I said, it, he's like a lot of the other guys, the more reps he gets, the better he'll get. And the more, the faster you play. You okay. It's that basically is the bottom line. And that's about how you play the game. If you play fast, you got a chance to do well. You mentioned Charles Garrett going between corner and safety. Bryson Keaton has done that uh, as well. Now, I'm sure for some people they say, well, is it really a big difference? How big a difference is it being on the corner versus being back there as a safety? Oh, it's quite, the view you get is quite a bit different, and mm-hmm. the, a lot of the responsibilities you get. Um, there's some defenses we play where the corners are primary run support players, and then there's others where the safeties are primary run support players. So it's quite a bit different. The safeties are here are quite a bit. They're asked to do a lot, a lot physically, meaning – in the run game and be tacklers and things. But our corners are also asked that in when we're playing some cover two schemes. So there, there, there's similarities, but there is differences. And the corners are, you know, those are 
high-skilled athletes out there. Mike Bradison is our guest. He is the safeties coach at the University of Nevada. Let's talk about a couple other guys that show up on the two deep. Nigel Hakins is a guy that transferred here last year from uh, junior college ball, getting really his first chance to, to get out there this year. Well, what have you seen from him so far this season? And, and maybe also you can address the jump you have to make. And you know about this. You did it as a player, going from junior college ball and then stepping up and, and playing at a higher level. Oh, the, the intensity is way different. I mean, co junior college, to high, high school junior college is a step. But junior college, a four-year college, is, is even a bigger step because of the f sophistication and the conditioning of all the athletes and that, that you're going against. So it's another big step. And, and Nigel, is, he's doing well. He's, he's making progress. And we, he's looking for him to b become a really good physical type player. Now, one guy that uh, is really just getting his feet wet as a true freshman is Cody DK, trying to, to, to bring him along. Talk about that jump, JC to D1, high school to D1 in one year. That, that's got to be a large gap for oh, a guy yeah. to have to oh, yeah. And he's he is uh, quote, jumped in the pool a little bit, and he's getting a little bit more and more with um, staying, keeping his nose above sea level and all <laughs> the kicking games and different things like that, and he's play a little bit of defense and hopefully that continues he can play a little bit more as the year keeps moving along you know coach obviously physically it's a big adjustment but what about the mental that's, side of it and, and how much more you just have to take on on a week by week that's basis? that's that's where it comes in because a lot of the freshmen cody dk physically is pretty much ready type kid to play here he's mm -hmm. big he's six foot two he's over close to 200 pounds and you know he runs fast and he he, he walks in the room he said oh there's there's a college safety so he, that part is good but the the mental part is again the 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 sophistications of these offenses that you're playing and how they attack you and you try to make it as simple as you can on defense and do the same things over and over but it is there's a lot to learn and a lot of things to study and again seeing it for the first time it's a whole new world I mentioned the time that you spent at UNLV and several years that you were there. You guys were an outstanding team, turnovers, outstanding in, in pass defense. Obviously, where the University of Nevada wants to go. What are the key elements? What does it take to have the type of success that you guys had those years that you were with UNLV? Well, thank you, but uh, it's it's experience, mm -hmm. and that that's the number one thing. And then it's running the system. When you get into a system and the kids learn it and then they believe in it and then it just builds and it builds and it builds. And that's what's happened. This is the first year of Coach Polian's system and, you know, the kids are adjusting and moving and, and they, hey, they're moving in the right direction. Yeah. I mentioned recruiting coordinator also part of your title. And as we look at recruiting, Coach Polian talked a lot about this the last couple of weeks and, and where they need to go in recruiting. What kind of response are you seeing on the recruiting trail with Coach Polian here now with a new staff in place and, and, and what they're trying to do? Oh, awesome. We're way, quote, ahead, I would say, in, in the regards of the responses of the kids. And we're attacking it heavily. And mm -hmm. Coach Polian is heavily involved weekly. You know, with phone calls and looking at video, and I mean, it's every. You know, he's talking about it every day, so it's it's good. And they really, it's it's refreshing, is the way I would put it. There's a lot of kids that are looking at Nevada, and I, I don't know that not wouldn't have looked before, but they're getting a lot of attention now. Yeah. Good things ahead. The future remains bright for Nevada football. Coach, it's always a pleasure to have you. Thanks for giving us a few minutes. Well, thank you. All right, Mike Bradison, our guest, here on the Wolfpack Coaches Show, presented by Lexus of Reno. We're coming back with more right after this.
One. The Wolfpack Coaches Show continues live at the Little Wall. We're presented by Lexus of Reno here every Wednesday night talking Wolfpack football from 7 to 8 o'clock. Love to have you come down and uh, join us here next Wednesday night. Jones West Ford is a proud sponsor of the Wolfpack. Reminds you of the next home game coming up on Saturday when the Wolfpack takes on UNLV. Jones West Ford, trucks built tough like the Wolfpack. Let's make a little history here on the Wolfpack Coach Show. This is the first time we have been graced by a kicker or punter. And uh, Chase Tenpenny, the outstanding punter for the uh, Wolfpack football team, is uh, with us here tonight. Chase out of Oskaloosa, that Kansas. Is correct. I got it right. How about that? It that only took me correct. practicing the entire break to make sure that uh, that I got that right. But uh, Chase now in his senior season. So tell me how a guy from uh, Oskaloosa, Kansas, ends up punting for the Nevada Wolfpack. Well, that's kind of a crazy story. Uh, uh, Coach Wilson got a hold of Dave Brown, which is our old football mm-hmm. operations guy. And he's like, do you know anybody from back where you're from? He said, I'll look. And there I was. I was an All-American in junior college. My name popped up. Said, all right. So, <laughs> Coach Wilson called me. Said, I want to get you out here. We need you. So, the rest is history from there. He just, I liked it. Uh, I was going to walk on at K State. That's about it. I mean, but a guy that has already put up good punting numbers, you got to enjoy coming to place your punting at altitude. That that's only going to make things better, right? Yeah, that's true. I mean, I really didn't notice it. I didn't think it was that true, but it does help from yeah. going from Florida State back to home going down to UCLA, it, the ball does fly a lot different. Tell me the story of becoming a punter, because you had actually played a lot of, like, defensive line, right? I mean, how, how did you get transitioned into, into being a punter? I was talking to a gentleman over here, and he's – I came from a small, small town. I graduated 46 people, and uh, so we didn't really have a punter or a kicker. It was like, whoever, raise your hand if you can kick. <laughs> so I've always been very flexible. So I was like, Coach, just let me try it. So since I was a kid, I always just kicked the ball. Dad always tells a story that ever since I was a kid, I'd pick the cat up and kick the cat. So who knows? <laughs> but <laughs> well, that's good. Chase Tempetti is our guest here on the Wolfpack Coaches Show, presented by Lexus of Reno. You know, it, it's easy for us to quantify when a, a defensive end has a, a terrific game because of sacks, or you know, when Cody has a good game because of the stats. People don't often sit down and look at the box score and look at the punters' stats. What are some of the games that stand out for you? The best games you've had since being here at Nevada. Best games, I'd say last year when we played uh, Air Force, mm-hmm. it was colder and all get out. <laughs> but I punted very well, and that's going back to the altitude. I mean, they're another 2,000 feet higher than us. But that, that was probably my best game here. I mean, I've had some memorable punts, but I can't say I've had an all-out better game than the other. How tough is it, speaking of the cold, you, know, you get out here in this area and you're, you're going to have some of that, but – to stand around the entire game, and then you might only get, hopefully, you only get one or two chances to go out there because the offense is doing it. How difficult is that to stand around and then be called upon and have to, to do your job? Honestly, I hate it. I really do because third down, you're stretching your leg. You're getting it ready. You're pulling your sweats off or something, and then they get the first down. So you just sit back and wait. Third down, you're back up there and ready to go again. So I don't know. It's just – Part of it. Yeah, difficult situation. Do you do you miss, you know, I talk about those times of playing defensive end or whatever. Do you miss being involved in the game oh, more yeah. often than just the maybe five, six times you get out there? Yeah, I loved, love hitting the quarterback or taking the tailback down for a tackle for a loss. I, I really did. Yeah. But my favorite thing probably was catching the ball. I love playing tight end. Very nice. Well, you know what? There's a lot of tight ends getting action right now, so maybe Coach Pullian can work in. Camrolo can, can work in in a Time formation. Running out. We saw you get a chance to run I, earlier this year. Maybe we'll see another one. Yeah, I mean, you know, the fakes are in there, so they may, uh, they may, uh, they may come back to get you. How do you see this team right now? I mean, obviously you guys, a couple games in a row have, have been tough for you, but still a long way to go in this season. How do you see this ball club right now? I see we're still kind of playing as individuals. We have the athletes. We have it's it's there. We just need to bring it all together. I really do. I mean, like we've played great first halves. So I don't know what's going on between the end of the second quarter going into the third, but I think that we it's I don't know. I really don't. Well, hopefully it gets sorted out on Saturday to knock off UNLV, have a big game, keep the cannon blue against the Rebels. Chase, we wish you nothing but success. Thanks for giving us a few minutes here tonight. Appreciate right. it. Thank you for having me. Chase Tenpenny, our guest. We'll take a break, come back and wrap it up right after this.
you crave even more Wolfpack action, keep up on all of Nevada athletics with News 4's Wolfpack All Access, presented by Champion Chevrolet, highlights, coaches' perspective, and more. Wolfpack All Access airs every Sunday night after NFL Sunday Night Football, only on News 4. Thanks for joining us here tonight for the Wolfpack Coaches Show, live from the Little Wall. We'll see you Saturday, Nevada UNLV. Game kicks off at 3 o'clock. We'll have the Bud Light Tailgate Show beginning at 1.30. And we'll see you back here next week, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, for the Wolfpack Coaches Show. Have a good one, everybody. Oh, no.